annals of history there are tales that captivate our imagination and shape our understanding of the world. One such tale is the story of Christopher Columbus and explorers often credited with discovering the United States of America. Americans keep a day of work on October 10 to celebrate Columbus Day. It's an annual holiday that's commemorated the day on October 12, 1492, when Christopher Columbus officially set foot in the United States of America. It has been a national holiday in the United States since 1937. I think it is rather surprising that they should have reddish brown skins, but now since we have landed in India, then these people must be Indian. Yet it is far from reality. As we continue to learn and grow as a society, it is important to re-examine the story we tell ourselves and to ensure that they reflect the truth, even if it is not always comfortable or convenient. Christopher Columbus did not discover the land that is known as United States of America. He never actually set foot on the United States of America. It would be more accurate perhaps to say that he introduced the American continent to Europe during his four voyages to the region between 1492 and 1502. His arrival marked the beginning of one of the most cruel episodes in human history, consist of genocides, conversion, atrocities, and opening a pathway from old world to the new, changing life forever on the both sides of Atlantic. Europe in the late 15th century was a great time of change, innovation and upheaval. The renaissance which had begun in Italy in the 14th century was spreading throughout Europe, ushering a new era of art, culture and learning. The printing press had been invented, making the mass production of books and other printed material possible for the first time in history. Trade and commerce were thriving as Europeans began to explore new markets and establish trade routes to distant lands. At the same time, Europe was also marked by political and religious conflicts. The Hundred Year War between England and France had recently ended, but tensions between these two powers remained high. The Catholic Church, which had been dominant a religious institution in Europe for centuries, was facing challenges to its authority, including the rise of Protestantism and the growing influence of secularism and humanism. When the Ottoman Empire took control of Constantinople in 1453, it blocked European access to the area, severely limiting trade. In addition it also blocked access to North Africa and the Red Sea two very important trade routes to the far east in the past european explorers and traders had relied on overland silk road to reach the far east but recently this land route to asia controlled in part by turks had been closed to europeans the late 15th century was also time of exploration and expansion as europeans power began to explore and colonize new lands Portugal, Spain, England, France and Netherlands were all vying for control of new territories and resources leading to the period of intense competition and conflict known as Age of Discovery. The first of the journey associated with Age of Discovery were conducted by Portuguese although the Portuguese, Spanish, Italians and other had been plying the Mediterranean for generations most sailors kept well within the sight of land or traveled known route between ports. Prince Henry the navigator changed that encouraging explorers to sail beyond the mapped routes and discover new trade routes to the west africa portuguese explorer discovered the madeira island in 1419 and others in 1427 over the coming decades they would push further south along the african coast reaching the coast of present day senegal by 1440s and cape of good hope by 1490 while the portuguese were opening new sea routes along africa the spanish also dreamed of finding new trade routes to the far east Columbus who received his training in navigation in Lisbon believed that he could reach the East Indies by sailing west across the Atlantic Ocean a route that had not yet attempted by any European navigator he was convinced that the distance between Europe and the East Indies was much shorter than the others believed and that he could make the journey in matter of weeks rather than months or years In 1484 Christopher Columbus proposed his plan to King John II of Portugal but it was rejected. He then approached King Ferdinand and Queen Isabel of Spain who also initially rejected his plan. After facing rejections and setback for 6 years Columbus turned to seek support from King of France. Fearing the potential success of Columbus expedition under another monarch sponsorship Ferdinand and Isabel eventually changed their minds and agreed to support him. With the promise of hereditary title, admiral of the ocean sea, and the right of tenth of any riches, pearls, gold, silver, silk, spices that he brought back from his voyage, they agreed to support supply two ships for his expeditions, 
Columbus himself raised the money to hire the third ship. On 3rd August 1492, with a crew of 90 men on board and three ships, sailed from Port of Palos, Spain. After 10 weeks at a sea, on October 12, 1492, Columbus and his crew had arrived somewhere. At dawn, the three ships dropped anchor in the calm blue water just offshore. Excited crew members crowded their decks, people were standing on the beach waiting to greet them. The natives had no weapon other than wooden fishing spears and they were practically naked. Their darts were made of kind of a rod without iron and had fish teeth or other things at the end. Who were these people and what place was this? They had arrived at an island in what we now call the Bahamas. Columbus thought he had found the East Indies, which was a region in Asia that was known for its spices and other valuable commodities. So he decided that those people on the beach must be Indians, the name by which they have ever known since. Columbus renamed it San Salvador, the first of many Caribbean islands that he would name. The natives who greeted him called their islands Guan Hani. Upon arriving in the new world, Columbus was awestruck by the people and the land he encountered. He was amazed at how the natives treated one another with kindness and gentleness. Christopher Columbus kept a journal of his first voyage which he presented to the Queen Isabella on his return to the Spain in 1493. The journal has a valuable source of information about Columbus' voyage as it provides details about the people he encountered, the place he visited and the events that took place. The original Spanish text of the Columbus journal has been lost since 1504. However, there are several copies of this journal that have survived. The most notable copy is one that was made by Bartolomé de las Casas, a Spanish friar and historian. From San Salvador, Columbus sailed on to several more islands. He stopped at Cuba and Hispaniola. Before the arrival of Christopher Columbus in 1492, most of the Caribbean was populated by three types of inhabitants. The largest group of people living on the islands were Tainos. The Tainos live in large, airy wooden houses with palm roofs, slept in cotton hammocks and kept a small barkless dogs, tame birds as pets and practiced agriculture, fishing and had skilled boat building abilities. To defend themselves against the aggressive Carib neighbors who were known for attacking Taino villages and practiced cannibalism, the Taino painted themselves red and fought back using clubs, bows and arrows and a spear propelled by throwing sticks. The villages were led by chieftains called Kasik who held some degree of authority and received tributes from the villagers during the time of crisis such as natural disaster or famine. The sight of indigenous people adorned with gold ornaments led Columbus to believe in the existence of abundant gold in the Caribbean, fueling his determination to explore, colonize and exploit the region's resources. After the Santa Maria ran aground on Christmas Day in 1492, Christopher Columbus established La Navidad on the island of Hispaniola, the first European settlement in the New World. Believing that he had discovered unknown islands near the shore of Asia, he sailed back to Spain with some gold from Hispaniola and with 10 Indians he had kidnapped so he could train them as interpreters and exhibit them at the royal court. At first, most observers in Spain considered his first voyage a total fiasco. He had not found a new trade routes and most valuable of his three ships, the Santa Maria, had sunk. He brought back some of these gold objects to Spain as a proof of his discoveries but the amount of gold was not significant. Later, when people began to realize that the land he had found were previously unknown, his stature grew and he was able to get funding for second, much larger voyage of exploration and colonization. Christopher Columbus was appointed as a governor and the viceroy of newly discovered lands by the Spanish crown in 1492. When Columbus returned to Hispaniola in 1493 to establish a colony, explore further, mine for gold, and to convert the indigenous people to Christianity, he discovered that the men he had left behind had raped indigenous women, abused the indigenous people, leading to violent retaliation. Columbus, aided by indigenous ally, blamed a rival chief and attacked his village, capturing and enslaving its many inhabitants. The captured chief were later taken to Spain, where he died in prison. In the same period, the newly discovered lands were primarily claimed by two European countries, Spain and Portugal. To address the growing conflicts, the line of demarcation was established in 1493 through the papal bull issued by Pope Alexander VI. However, Portugal failed the division favored Spain and negotiation led to the signing of the Treaty of Tordesillas in 1494. The treaty adjusted the line, giving Portugal a larger share including present-day Brazil. This secured Spain's support for Columbus and his future voyages. The treaty set a precedent for European colonization, dividing the world, paving the way for age of exploration and empire building. 
After the destruction of La Navidad, Columbus decided to relocate the settlement to a new site, La Isabela, which turned out to be a bad location due to harsh climate and lack of suitable resources. Furthermore, the large amount of gold they had been promised turned out to be more of a trickle. Meanwhile, relations with many of the Indian tribes had soured too and war soon broke out between the Spaniards and some of the tribes. But the Spanish had a huge technical edge and the warfare was grossly one-sided. Many Indians were killed and even more captured and forced to work on finding gold. Michel de Quinio, a participant in Columbus' second expedition, documented a disturbing incident that revealed the brutal treatment of the indigenous people by the Spaniards. Quinio boasted about capturing a beautiful indigenous woman given to him by Columbus himself. He described his attempt to engage in sexual activity with her, disregarding her unwillingness. As supply brought from Spain dwindled, Columbus returned to Spain in 1496 leaving his brother Bartholomew as temporary governor. Columbus presented his findings to the Ferdinand and Isabel, but since he had not found much gold or valuable commodities, he proposed the idea of trading enslaved people instead. He brought with him dissatisfied colonists, a captive Indian chief, and Indian prisoners. The Spanish monarchs granted Columbus permission to organize a third voyage to resupply the colonists and further explore for a new trade route. Upon departure from Spain in May of 1498, Columbus split his fleet of six ships. Three ships were sent to Hispaniola for supplies, while the other three aimed to explore new territories and search for route to the Indies. After encountering difficulties and drifting in doldrums, they discovered Trinidad and became the first Europeans to set foot on the South American soil. The natives they encountered were friendly and gladly exchanged pearls for European trinkets. During his absence, his brother Bartholomew had abandoned Isabel and established his headquarters at Santo Domingo. When Columbus returned to Hispaniola, where he faced unrest among the settlers and faced a question of mismanagement, which led to his imprisonment by Francisco de Bobadilla, who had been sent by Spanish crown to investigate the situation. Columbus and his brother were sent back to Spain in shackles. Though Columbus was quickly pardoned by Spanish monarch, he was stripped of his right to govern the islands and lost his title as Admiral of the Ocean Sea. The fall of Columbus and his family in the New World created a power vacuum, and the King and Queen of Spain quickly filled with Nicolas de Ovando, a Spanish nobleman who was appointed governor, who ruthlessly wiped out native settlements and continued the exploration of the New World, setting the stage for Age of Conquest. Columbus was allowed to make one final voyage sailing uncharted territories west of the Caribbean in search of passage to Asia. On May 11, 1502, Columbus sailed with four ships and 140 men including his brothers and younger son. They encountered a hurricane near Martinique but managed to find shelters while warning others about the approaching storm. Continuing their journey, Columbus explored the coast of Honduras, Nicaragua and Costa Rica, eventually reaching Panama. Columbus sailed with his ship along the coast of Panama in search of a strait. Although Columbus never found the strait, his encounter with Cuna people and their knowledge of the South Sea helped to pave the way of future explorers who eventually crossed the isthmus of Panama and reached the Pacific Ocean. Stranded in Jamaica, Columbus used his knowledge of astronomy to predict a lunar eclipse, impressing the natives and securing their support. Despite facing a mutiny, he was eventually rescued and returned to Spain in 1504. Meanwhile, a Spanish colonists settled in various West Indian islands, employing local Indians as forced laborers and subjecting them to brutal treatment or selling them as slaves. Tens of thousands of native people were worked to death or died of a smallpox, measles, or other European diseases to which they had no immunity. As the natives died off, the colonists brought the black slave from Africa to labor on the ranches and spreading sugarcane fields. There were about 300,000 of inhabitants of Hispaniola in 1492. By 1548, it was estimated to be only 500. Within 50 years, the inhabitant had ceased to exist as a distinct race of people. Christopher Columbus implemented the encomenda system in the New World. Under this system, indigenous individuals were required to provide gold or valuable items to the Spanish colonizers. Failure to meet the imposed quota often result in severe consequence for the indigenous communities. The encomenda system led to the mistreatment, abuse, and decline in indigenous population. Columbus' rule over a Spanish settler was also marked by brutal punishments, including public whippings and mutilation. By 1502, the Florentine merchant and explorer Americo Vespucci had figured out that Columbus was wrong. Vespucci was best known for his voyage to the America, during which he explored the coast of what is now Brazil, 
Venezuela and Argentina. His travel took place between 1497 and 1504 in which he wrote a series of letters describing his experiences and observations which were published and widely read in Europe. He became the first person to use the term New World to describe the America in his 1503 letter. The first map of the world to show this newly discovered land across the ocean sea appeared in 1507, a year after Christopher Columbus' death. The map maker Martin Waldseemuller named the New World America after the Italian Amerigo Vespucci, who had explored the coastline of South America and was forced to realize that it was a separate continent, not part of Asia. When Columbus landed in 1492, the American continent had been settled for tens of thousands of years. He wasn't the first person to discover the continent. Instead, his discovery was last of many discoveries. The discoverers came by sea, land, bringing new genes, languages, technologies, and cultures. Some stayed, explored, and built empires. Others went home and left a few hints that they had ever been there. So if Columbus was not first, why does he get all of the credit? Why there have been thousands of parades, speeches, and statues commemorating Columbus along with a critical rethinking of his life and legacy and celebrating Columbus Day. Until the mid-1700s, Christopher Columbus was not widely known among most Americans. This began to change in late 1700s after the United States gained independence from Britain. Now we were a free, independent nation. The new idea had won its first test. Now to pass it on to future Americans. The Constitution, the sacred charter of we the people the blood and sweat of we the people, the life, liberty and happiness of we the people. In the late 19 and early 20 centuries, Italian immigrants began moving to United States in large numbers seeking better economic opportunities and fleeing poverty and political unrest in Italy. An estimated 4 million Italians immigrated to United States from 1880 to 1920. Many of them were farmers and laborers fleeing poverty. In America, they encountered religious discriminations, difficult working conditions, and a culture of anti-Italianism that viewed from as an inferior and associated them with organized crime. Many in the community saw celebrating the life and accomplishment of Christopher Columbus as a way for Italian Americans to be accepted by mainstream. The first Columbus Day celebration recorded in the United States was in New York on October 12, 1792 held to honor Italian-American heritage. In one of the most infamous cases, 11 Italian-Americans were shot to death and mutilated by mob in New Orleans in 1891. A New York Times editorial published soon after described the mob victims as desperate ruffians and murderers. The incident had serious national repercussion. The lynchings had sparked a diplomatic crisis between the United States and Italy. To his tensions and placate Italian Americans, President Benjamin Harrison called the 1891 crime deplorable, and on the 400th anniversary of Columbus' arrival in America, he designated October 21, 1892, a general holiday, describing the explorer as a pioneer of progress and enlightenment. The commemoration of Columbus' journey in 1892 was a large scale event with celebration held across the United States. There were parades, speeches, and other public events, and many cities erected statues, monuments, and also marked by a number of scholarly and artistic works, including the Ballet Columbus and Discovery of America. It helped to solidify Columbus' status as a national hero. Columbus Day became a national holiday in 1937 after much lobbying by Knights of Columbus, a Catholic fraternal organization. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1937 proclaimed October 12th to be Columbus Day, a national holiday. In 1971, the holiday date was changed to the second Monday in October as a part of larger effort to extendize federal holidays. Over time, Columbus Day has become a controversial holiday, with some group calling for its abolition due to negative impacts of Columbus' action on indigenous population. Many indigenous people and their allies view Columbus Day as a celebration of colonization and genocide of native people and instead advocate for the holiday to be replaced with Indigenous People Day, a day that honors the resilience and contribution of indigenous peoples. As of 2023, there are at least 15 states and over 100 cities and counties in the United States that have replaced Columbus Day with Indigenous People Day. The transition from Columbus Day to Indigenous People Day is a positive step toward a more accurate and inclusive understanding of the American history. On May 20, 1506, Columbus died in a Spanish monastery at the age of 57, still believing that he had found a new route to the Asia 
By then, other explorers were following the sea route pioneered by the Admiral of the Ocean Sea, and Europeans were already speaking of the Columbus discoveries as a new world.